In 2005, Apple released a radical new image processing and management program called Aperture. Today, this program is in its third incarnation, and whilst maintaining the look of the original, has a huge number of improvements and innovations. The object of this series of videos is to introduce you to the multitude of features of Aperture and the many ways of working within the program. Aperture is a very powerful image management program, and before we import any images into its library, we have to make a fundamental decision on how we wish to manage our image collection. There are basically three ways in which you can manage images in Aperture. The first is called referenced files. This is useful if you already have a large collection of well-organized images in folders on your hard drive. Rather than have Aperture import and basically duplicate the collection, we ask the program to reference the images in the folders where they reside. The second system is called Managed Images. Here, Aperture will import the master files into its own library and file structure. Whilst these images can be accessed outside of Aperture, they may not be easy to find. The advantage of this system is that every image is in the same place, and using Aperture's Vault system, it is very easy to back your catalogue up on a daily basis. Thirdly, you could choose to use a combination of both systems. In my opinion, however, this is not a favourable situation, as it can lead to confusion as to where the images reside. When you open Aperture for the first time, the first question you will be asked is whether you wish to open Aperture when you connect your digital camera. The choices are Use Other. This will allow you to use a card reader or other ways of importing images. Decide Later or use Aperture. Personally, I use a card reader and find it quite distracting if Aperture opens every time I plug in a camera. The second question is would you like to see your photos on a map? This is very useful for images captured on a camera with GPS or a smartphone like the iPhone. The computer needs to be connected to the internet for maps to be shown. There is no disadvantage to switching this off, so we will go ahead and leave it on. There are a number of other windows that may open when you first open Aperture, but for the moment we can safely ignore those. You will now be in Aperture's primary interface. If for any reason you were not asked a question regarding faces, we can turn it off manually. Go to Aperture. Preferences, General, and untick the Faces checkbox. Close the Preferences by clicking the X in the top left of the box. Rather than trying to explain the interface without any images, we're going to go ahead and import some. Before we actually do the import, we need to understand a little about the catalogue hierarchy. On the left-hand side of the screen, we see the library. It will already have a number of folders and albums in it, but we are going to create our own. The first thing we will do is create a project. Go to File, New, Project. Depending on how you wish to organise your catalogue, name your project. I like to keep my images organised chronologically, so I base my projects on the year. Let's go ahead and name the project Images 2011. Your project will now appear in the library screen. We are now going to create a folder within the project to represent the month. Select the project and we can either go File New Folder or we can right click or control click on the project and select New Folder. We will name this July 2011. Inside the folder we will create our album. This is the lowest level of the hierarchy and best used to organise on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, you can go File New Album or right-click on the folder you just created. 
Let's call this folder 2011-07-29 Odessa. The advantage of this naming technique is that the albums will naturally be in chronological order within the folder. So we are ready to import. Click the import icon in the top left of the aperture interface. The import window opens up. If you do not have a card or camera connected to the computer at this stage, plug one in now. Don't worry if you want to import the images from the hard drive, I will explain that too. When you connect your card or camera, Aperture will by default open up that device. In the upper left of the import screen, you will see the devices from which you can import images. Here we can see a card and the hard drive from the Apple Mac. Rather than import from our card, let's import the images already on our drive. Click on the hard drive icon and you will see that the window bottom center will now show the folder hierarchy of that drive. Navigate to the folder where your images are placed. All the images in that folder will now appear in the import browser. By default, they are all checked for import. If you wish to only import selected images, click on the uncheck all box at the top and then select the images individually. For now, we're going to select all. In the right hand window, we have the import dialog. At the top is the project destination for the images. By default, it is set to new project. As we want to import to the album we have already set up, we will click on that album in the left hand window. The store files dialog is important. This is where we make the fundamental decision on how we wish to catalogue our images. By default it is set to in the Aperture library. This means Aperture will directly import the images inside its own catalogue hierarchy. Clicking on the drop down box reveals three other options. In their current location will allow Aperture to just reference the images that already exist in an ordered catalogue. Pictures will import the images into the Pictures folder on your Mac hard drive. And Choose will allow you to define where you want to store the images. I am going to select in the Aperture library. The Rename Files dialog has a number of options for the way your files will be named. I generally name the files to the same name as the album. Choose Edit and you will see a number of naming options. Type the name you require in the box at the top. I will name mine 2011-07-29 Odessa. I will also add a hyphen and then drag the counter button onto the end of my file. At the bottom of the window, change the number of digits to 3, more if you shoot a thousand plus images per day, and then set the starting number to 1. There are a number of other import options that we can cover in another lesson, but for now press the Import Checked button at the bottom right of the screen.